Bam, what's goody everyone? Jordan Baywood here and I'm a music producer and audio engineer. And today is a video all about vocal effects. I like thinking of vocal effects as the cherry on top of ice cream. You don't want too much, but it always adds that extra sauce that you need to take your vocals to the next level. So I wanted to make one whole video about it. I didn't want to separate reverbs and delays and exciters. I wanted to put it all in one because I do think of vocal effects as one. You're really using them slightly just to add that extra sauce on top. This is part four of the last tutorial you'll ever need series and I started this out of frustration because I was tired of people over complicating stuff. And I wanted a series that was in order of mixing a vocal from complete scratch. Something like this has not been done. If you have any questions at all during this video, please leave them down below and if you're not subscribed already hit that subscribe button to be notified the next time we drop a video on vocal mixing and mastering while you're at it you might as well turn that like button blue because it throws confetti all over the place it's a new update YouTube just did if you haven't already I highly suggest watching the first to third episodes before you get to this one that way you can have context already we did auto-tune which I turned off because I don't think this song needs it but I did do a deep dive into auto-tune tune we did a deep dive into vocal EQs compressors and then we did a bit of DSing let's play what we have so far and then I want to talk where my brains at what kind of effects am I thinking and what's gonna give it that extra sauce that we're looking for and by the way if you stay stay to the end of this series I'm gonna be giving out this complete vocal template and mastering template for free so let's listen to before and after I'm gonna slowly turn on all the plugins that we have play I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank Got stars in my eyes, so sweet but feel I'm fuck And by the way, we're using nothing but stock plugins And we're still producing that rich sound So it sounds nice and consistent, it's up in your face Just like how Joey Holly, this artist that I'm mixing, loves it The next thing I'm thinking is that I want a bit more top end, rich top end, and in order to do that um, rich top end, I like to use a plugin called Exciter by Logic. It's one of my favorite plugins. It's in Specialized, and then you can hit Exciter. Now what an Exciter is doing, it's not like an EQ where it's just boosting high end because we already did that. We boosted enough highs. Exciter is actually gonna add harmonics to the vocal, so it's gonna add in lost frequencies that weren't there let's say around the 8k range we really like that top end in Joey's voice but he doesn't have enough frequencies up in that range so what a harmonic plugin does is it multiplies that frequency in that range and gives it more of a wider spectrum so it's bringing in those frequencies it's the same thing a, a saturation does it's bringing in lost frequencies so um, a lot of people ask me hey well my vocals sound very thin um, we'll try adding a little bit of mids, but also it's probably because your vocal is just lacking frequencies in the lower end. So what I would use is an exciter, and I would put it around that mid to low range, and that's going to beefen up that mid range. So let's check it out. I'm going to harmonics at zero, and we're going to go around the mids. Let's just... For example purposes, let's boost up some mids. But you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. Got stars in my eyes, so sweet, but feel I'm fucking heartless. So you see it added that. So we're adding harmonics. The higher you go with this, the more frequencies it's going to add out of nowhere, really. And I call this a vocal effect because we're putting a frequency in this vocal that wasn't there before. With EQs and compressor, all we're doing is shaping the frequencies that we already have. That's why it's a vocal effect. So I'm going to put this at zero. I like starting around like 8900, that's where I'm hearing it right now, and all I'm going to do is boost this up until it sounds right. But you don't ever get the concept, the dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank, got stars in my eyes, so sweet but feel I'm fucking heartless, I'm heartless, so I think I'm fucking heartless. 
I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank Got stars in my eyes, so sweet but feel I'm fucking heartless I'm heartless, so I think I'm fucking heartless That's nice right there um, it just gave it that little zing that we wanted. I want to kind of glue the vocal together with my next effect. And the way I do this is by using a very small reverb directly on the vocal. What I want to remember is I want to change out this. I want to switch the place of this de and exciter. I want to make sure that the de is still controlling those highs. Um, so that's why I would change the the order of the exciter and de -esser. So that way, we're boosting this top end still with harmonics, and that de is still gonna catch these harsh S's after it. So that's perfect after it. Usually on your de you're gonna want it at the last plug-in on the chain before like reverbs and delays. So next, we're gonna use um, my favorite reverb, which is chroma verb, and we're gonna set the decay around like point, point two five. bring the size down to like 25%, we're making it very, very small, and it's gonna give its own little space for the vocal, and it's gonna smooth it out and help glue it together. So dry all the way up, and distance can go to 25%. Attack all the way down, no pre-delay. We're not using this reverb as a long tail, roomy effect. We're gonna use it to really smooth it out and make it more consistent. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept the dark in my and that just gave it such a rich tone. And a lot of people ask me, hey, when you start doing you know, your main effects like reverbs and delays, why I see a lot of people busting them and you put them on directly on the chain. Well, I do this because when I make presets, imagine, you know, it's very confusing if I were to send you a main chain and then buses and you have to import buses and then you have to enter main chain. What I say is the human ear can't sense a difference all these people saying you need to bus, the only reason they'll say you have to bus is because it's gonna sound better. No, it doesn't sound better. It sounds directly the same. It's the same thing as a dry wet knob. However, there's certain reverbs that you, you should bus because they don't have a dry wet option. And that's simple as that. And also, I like to bus when I have a lot of vocals. So we are going to bus in today's video because look at this. We have we have dubs, ad libs, we have layers. So that's why I like bussing. I always start on the chain first and then I um, transition to a bus. Let's start with a delay. We gotta figure out on this, do we want a delay going down the middle or stereo out? So do we want it on the left and right or down the middle? Let's try both. So the first delay I like using um, one of my favorite delays ever is Stereo Delay by Logic. I like this reverb or delay because the left and right channel differ. So you get a much more stereo field. Of course, I cut the lows up to 500 and then I take out the highs up to around 5,000. And I do this because when we are using effects, we want to make sure that it's not competing with the low end with our bass and stuff. The bass and pads should be the only thing on the low end or it'll get really muddy and our ears don't like that. This left and right output mix is the ba same thing as bussing, okay? A lot of people don't realize that. So another reason why you'd bus is if this delay didn't have a EQ built into it, what we'd have to do is bus it, send this, remember this is dry and wet, so all this, this output would be all the way up and then we would use this as the dry wet knob and then we would have to throw on an EQ and then boom. So this EQ is only affecting this delay on this bus and then this is the dry wet knob. That's wh why you know some people would say you have to bus because some effects don't have an EQ built into them. But thankfully the best vocal effects in Logic already have that uh, EQ built into them. Boom, all right, we got it EQ'd. Let's go up to 500, five, you know, 600, whatever. We're gonna lower this to like 10% and work around that. And 1 8, 1 8. I don't mess with anything else. Uh, you can do that for fun, but it sounds great the way it is. So that's how I leave it. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. Got stars in my eyes, so sweet, but feel I'm fucking hard. So the main thing I get when people send me their tracks, they just put too much delays and reverbs. You don't want to overcompensate. When you have a nice vocal, remember, 
you shouldn't put 10 cherries on the ice cream it's just too much you shouldn't have more way more whipped cream than the ice cream like remember with effects are just like adding the toppings and the cherry we want to have it minimal a lot of people will send me it like this it takes your mind away from the main vocal whenever it does that it's too much so i like um lowering it all the way starting let's start from zero and then slowly increase it i say how i feel but you don't ever get the concept the dark in my mind almost as black as my new car tank got stars in my eyes so sweet but feel i'm fucking heartless i'm heartless so i think i'm fucking heart so that sounds really good to me i'm really liking that delay let's try a mono delay as well um in order to get mono delay you go to tape delay right here a lot of mono delay is used by wavy trap artists uh, the Migos use this a lot. Gunna uses um, that mono delay, and it sounds good sometimes. But let's see how it sounds in this. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. Got stars in my eyes, so sweet, but feel I'm fucking heartless. I'm heartless, so I think. So I'm thinking I like the stereo delay better on this. I think it's just because the vocal is so powerful that you don't really, we don't need anything more in the mono section. And I think it's lacking on that stereo field. So I think that's why it's, uh, this stereo delay is working better. But I always suggest try both of them on your track. You never know until you try it. And now my mind's thinking, I want to add a little more space to it, a bigger space. We're going to use chroma verb again. I just think it's one of the best reverbs ever made. Let's try some different stuff. Let's try a vocal hall. Uh, decay, let's try like one point. Let's go to 1.5. Distance will go up. Pre-delay, like, I like going 20 milliseconds. It always works. And dry all the way up. And we're going to start at zero. And we're just going to add some... This is adding that sauce. The more you add, the um, higher the reverb will be. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. Got stars in my eyes, so sweet, but feel I'm fucking heartless. I'm heartless, so I think I'm fucking heartless. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. Got stars in my eyes, so sweet, but feel I'm fucking heartless. I'm heartless, so I think I'm fucking heartless. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. Got stars in my eyes, so sweet, but feel I'm fucking heartless. I'm heartless, so I think I'm fucking heartless. Wow, that sounds really good to me. This concert hall was amazing. Um, I suggest when you're using this reverb, just play the song and start messing with these. These are going to get a different sound. Mess with the decay and mess with the dry wet knob. That's really going to make a huge difference. I'm only using 8% and I might even go lower to like 7%. We're not using it to overcompensate. We're just using it to add that sauce. I love how we're sounding. So let's turn off those, uh, you know, that exciter and those three um, vocal effects, other vocal effects with the two chroma verbs and delay. Let's see. I'm going to slowly turn them on and see the difference. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank Got stars in my eyes, so sweet but feel I'm fucking heartless I'm heartless, so I think I'm fucking heartless That sounds great Now to keep things organized, let's move things to the buses We're just gonna move these that stereo delay and the last reverb Remember, this the the small little reverb is used directly on the chain we're using that to glue the vocal together so that can stay on but we're gonna do is uh let's keep it simple let's make a bus um on bus one let's move the stair delay over there what we're gonna do is turn this all the way up and we're just going to make a bus two and throw this chroma verb on there throw the wet all the way up to dry all the way down and then we're slowly gonna turn these on till we like them I say how I feel but you don't ever get the concept the dark in my mind almost as black as my new car tank got stars in my eyes so sweet but feel I'm fucking heartless I'm heartless so I think I'm fucking heartless 
Nice. All right, so we just bust them. And by the way, at the end of this series, I will be giving this whole vocal template, this logic project, and you'll be having this exact project file. For the next video, we're going to be mixing these ad libs right here and dubs. I say how I feel, but you don't ever get the concept. The dark in my mind, almost as black as my new car tank. So that's a layer, a dub, um, you know, an ad lib, whatever you want to call it. It's a, a vocal layer. So the next video, we're going to be doing that. Uh, the final video would be the mastering video. So we'll be mastering this this track at the end. So yeah, this will be it for the fourth video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button. It really helps uh, the channel. And if you're not subscribed already, I don't know what you're doing, but... You need to hit that subscribe button, please. And if you want to be updated when I live stream, I do music feedback um, a few times a week on the live stream. So make sure you hit that post notification bell next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified anytime I live stream. It's been a lot of fun live streaming. We get 20 to 30 people and everybody's sending in music for feedback. A lot of talent we're discovering. Uh, so it's amazing. We're really building the community and I'm so excited to be doing this with you guys. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to comment them down below. I will see you guys next video. Peace.